Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliance's, visit www.alliances.com. All righty, I got to tell you, I got the best job ever in the world. Why? Because I get to meet and interview the most famous and coolest people ever. And the next one's going to definitely be one of those two. And by the way, thanks for the feedback we continue to have when I interviewed Lee Steinberg and also to the co-founder of Netflix. So make sure you check out, you know, Eliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. Why? Well, it's the only place, the only place where entrepreneurs align. And we have with us Gary Gilliam. He's the pro NFL player for Seattle Seahawks, San Francisco 49ers, and wait till you hear the project of what he's doing now. Welcome to the show, Gary. Listen, we're super excited to have you and welcome. And we're going to just get right right into it and all that. First of all, is, is you know, making it to the NFL is a huge accomplishment of its own. And you were on the Seattle Seahawks, San Francisco 49ers. Like, how did you make it? Um, well, shoot, I mean, it was a long path to get there. You know, first going to Milton Hershey School when I was younger. Um, that's a boarding school in Hershey, Pennsylvania for um, families under the poverty line single parent homes, orphans, you know, the like. And um, that's the school that I went to when I was eight years old, um, graduated from that school, went on to play football at Penn State. Um, while I was at Penn State, I triple majored in business development, advertising and psychology. Um, obviously left, well, graduated from Penn State and then took my shot at the NFL. I was not drafted. Um, I went undrafted and I chose to go to the Seattle Seahawks who had just won a Super Bowl. So my chances of making that team were, you know, kind of slim to none, but, you know, put my head down and, and grinded out and worked and um, ended up making a team and eventually won the starting spot through my years of being there. Um, and then got a new contract with the 49ers after that. That's phenomenal. So talk to us about what's going through your head when you're first walking out there. So now you're playing for the NFL, you're walking out on the field, first time actually playing in front of the crowd, real game at the top of the top. Like, what are you thinking? Honestly, <laughs> the first thing I thought was like, wow, there's not very many fans here. Um, <laughs> this is because playing at, at Penn State and uh, the Big Ten, like a lot of our crowds were like over 100,000 people. Um, and in Seattle, I think the max it ever got to was like 68,000, but it was very loud. But um, that was probably the first thing I thought like, well, there's not as many people like in person as I thought there would be. Um, but aside from that, it was like, all right, well, this is football, right? This is what I've been doing, you know, most of my life. This is the same game, you know, so let's block out all the noise and let's go execute. So talk to us more too, is, is what, what, what did you see most unique, you know, as playing? I mean, you know, you, you've worked, you worked real hard to get to where you got and where you are today. And I mean, the thing is, is that unless someone's done it, a lot of people just don't realize the path to it. Were there times that you thought, Hey, you know what, this is enough. I'm out. Yeah. 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 And I would say that probably the most significant moment like that would have been in college. It was my sophomore year, um, October 2nd, 2010. I remember the exact day. I uh, We were playing in Iowa, Penn State versus Iowa, just before halftime. Um, I was a tight end still at the time. And um, I think Derek Moy had caught the ball and I was going to go make a block for him and just didn't have my weight under me. So when I engaged the block, my knee kind of like hyperextended and did some, some weird things. And Ended up tearing my ACL, my meniscus, part of my patella, had a few bone bruises. Um, and that in and of itself is, is, is complicated. But that was supposed to be two surgeries. And in between those two surgeries, I had actually developed a staph infection in my bone marrow. Um, so now I went from, you know, just trying to get back and play football to kind of fighting for my life in a sense. Um, luckily, we caught it early enough to, to get it all out. But that then took another three surgeries to go in and clear out all that infection in my knee to make sure it wouldn't come back and be an issue. Um, so, you know, got my MCL meniscus and that fixed. Then I had three surgeries for the infection. Then finally got my ACL surgery. Um, probably, I think it was like nine months after the injury, which then you got another nine months of, of recovery after that. Um, and through all that time, especially with all the complications with the infections, you know, I was just like, man, I just want to walk again. Like I could care less about playing football. Like, you know, you're taking all these painkillers to, to manage the pain and, and just to be able to try and sleep at night and you got to be up and obviously go to class and, and you still got workouts. You still obviously got rehab. Um, and it's just a lot, you know, you're, you're at college, you're by yourself. Um, so you got to pull through it. And I remember calling, you know, to some of my spiritual mentors um, and then just let me know, like, look, you've got this, this battle for a reason. You know, like get through it and it's going to form your character, you know, into who you need to be in the future. 
Um, but yeah, that, I remember that moment. It was times that there was a there was a few times within that span of time where I was just like, man, look, I don't even I don't even want to play football. I just want to walk. <laughs> like I care less about all this stuff. Um, right. Not through it. Yeah, I mean that's serious stuff, and I mean, yeah, and thank you for sharing that too. Because again, most people to just you know if they're not in that specific field, they don't know, and how how much it takes to go through it. And you're listening and watching and viewing me, David Kogan, host of the Alliance's Hero Show. Nobody has any idea how much goes on behind the scenes here, but a lot does, and we make it happen here. And we've got with us again Gary Gilliam, pro NFL player, Seattle Seahawks, San Francisco 49ers. And we're going to be talking about his new project or his project he's working on here in just a minute. But, Gary, let's go back to is, is – um, you know, you came from poverty, you, you've built, you, you you went to school. I mean, you, you've really accomplished a lot. What do you think some of the, the secrets that you could share right now with both, you know, parents that are out there that are raising children, um, whether it be in inner cities or not? I mean, a lot of people are affected by a lot of stuff going on in that. How do you, Gary, stay on the path to, to do right? I think one, understanding that, you know, being a human in 2020 is a special place to be. Um, and then even kind of before that, like from for myself, getting an opportunity to get out of Harrisburg because my mom put me into Milton Hershey School, you know, where I was able to to thrive and, and become the person I am today because they provided us with resources and an environment to learn. And it was OK to, to be an athlete and be a scholar so that, you know, more developed who I was and more developed my character. But I think the most important thing you got to do is, is, is really just continue to try and develop yourself. Um, and as you try and reach you, the best version of yourself, you want to contribute that back to society. Well, let's talk about your project now, thebridgeechovillage.com. It can be reached again, Gary, can be reached at thebridgeechovillage.com. We'll also have it on our website at alliances.com, E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. Talk to us about this. Yeah, so um, the Bridge Eco Village is an idea um, a few different business models that had written up a few of my buddies and of my buddies and us had talked about um, and kind of decided to put it together. Easiest way to explain it is it's kind of a mixed use development, but that's really not it. <laughs> but that's kind of the easiest way to explain it. And what we do is one of our products is, is finding old properties. So like abandoned schools, um, abandoned malls, warehouses, the like. And most of them are in residential areas or in places that is, you know, are rather accessible. So it's a good place to grab. And most of them are owned by a city or a school district in most cases, if we're referring to schools, and they don't really want just another nursing home or you know a bunch of affordable housing. Like they want true resources as there used to be um, in those communities. So in and, and acquiring these schools, what we do is transform them into eco villages. And what an eco village is, is it's comprised of five different things, work, eat, live, learn, and play. Um, and, and what we like to say is that at any point in time in your day, you're probably doing one of those five things. So why not do them all in one place in a holistic in a holistic way? Um, so sustainably, which to us is not just a buzzword, it means longevity. So in acquiring these properties, ones that have been there for a while, you know, they've got great bones, they've got great structure. We just got to update the systems and do something productive with them. Um, that's the most sustainable thing to do. That's that's forward thinking. You know, we don't have to continue to urban sprawl. We can continue to develop what we already have, implementing the technology we have and the systems that we've continued to develop through time. So with that being said, work, eat, live, learn, play. Work is providing co-working, co-working spaces, maker spaces to allow people to come and tinker, um, learn things that they wouldn't oftentimes get a chance to learn or be involved in. That eat branch is indoor urban agriculture, closed loop by way of aeroponics. So growing food, misting the roots with no soil, hydroponics, which is submerging the roots in water with no soil. Um, and then there's aquaculture, which is actually growing a fish. Um, we've got a couple other processes too. We actually can pull in fresh food waste to convert that into nutrients to grow more food, um, lower our carbon footprint. Obviously, we've got tons of PV, so solar panels um, to not just be net zero, but striving to be net positive. Um, water collection to lower our water consumption and obviously recycle the water that's coming on site. Um, I spoke about the waste um, and our carbon. So doing all those things together um, while teaching the community, the bridge builders, the ones that live there, the ones that work there, um, the different sustainable business and, and living habits too. So, you know, making sure you shut off things and unplug things and, and just your shorter showers or your processes and the, and the way you move through society 
also, you know, bodes to the eco village aspect of it. The village part comes from everybody being together and doing everything together the way we used to do things as humans. You know, we're made to be together and we do better when we're together. Um, so trying to bring that back. And like I said, just converting these old properties into things that can be really useful and beacons for their communities. Gary, I think I'm, you convinced me I'm ready to move in. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. You'll be my neighbor. That's great. Awesome. Well, Gary, Gary Gilliam, pro NFL player, Seattle Seahawks, San Francisco 49ers, and now to all in one micro cities, building it to help the community. You can reach him at the bridge echo village.com. You know what? That makes a hero building communities that could be sustainable. That's what it's all about. Make sure that you contact him. This has been David Kogan with the Alliance's Hero Show. <laughs>